go to the house of the Lord. I'm glad to be in his house tonight. Thank you. Thank you. protection and cover. We anyway, appreciate the presence of the Lord tonight. Sing to the Lord. Just worship the Lord with us. Oh, yeah.
in the house of the Lord. Yes, yes amen. We'll go to prayer in just a few moments, but let's sing again unto the Lord. A lot of folks. This morning, of course, we had a cold, cold day. So let's pray. The Lord to warm things up. <laughs> so good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. So worship the Lord with us in song one more time. Continue to touch 
Sister Bobby, you know, in the circumstance tonight. Now, uh, light, was it light? Light, yeah. Just remember her in prayer tonight. She said, she needs and we're going to pray for her. Brother Bob, your daughter Bethany is sick. Yeah, just remember Bethany in prayer. And uh, Susie Q and Brother Kenny tonight, remember them in prayer. And then, uh, Sister uh, Desi's real sick too, Brother Hart. Who? Destin is real sick. Let's pray for him. Yeah, Bad ear and yeah. All right, Mother. I also remember my wife, Lisa. Sister Lisa and my daughter, Marcia, she's been having some problems with her uh, body, and she needs God a special touch in her body tomorrow. All right, let's remember those needs. Melinda <coughs> Tony, continue yes. to remember her in prayer. Yes. In general tonight. Any others? Yes, sir. No, I just remember Christy. She had a well a heart monitor to, tonight. Okay. Oh, I should go for a lot of tasks. Ooh. Sister Christy. All right. Well, we'll be praying. Yes. The Lord's able. Do you remember my Uncle Bond going out to you? Which one is his first name? Bond. Bond. Just remember the Bond. He's been diagnosed with cancer again for the fourth time. Fifth time. Uh, let's remember those needs in prayer. Any others tonight? Tonight, tonight, tonight. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. If you'd like to take some time and get around the Psalter, you can. If you're there in the room, Sister Green, in just a few moments, uh, little Grayson is very sick tonight, so we're going to take some extra yes. time and pray yes. for Grayson tonight. If you have a special need right now, you're watching, by the way, Facebook, and we're going to take that need for the Lord to. Right now, church family, let's just kind of get around this altar together where you are. We're going to pray for a little while. Ask the Lord to move tonight. Jesus never fails. Lord, I thank you for your word tonight. I thank you, God, that you're such a mighty, awesome God. I praise you. Lord, right now, as we come to you in the need of all these people tonight, I know, God, that they're counting on the prayers of the saints of God. I feel an honor, God, tonight that we can come before your presence, Lord. Something about your presence that makes everything worthwhile, God. When we gather in the midst of the people that are two or three gathered together in your name, Lord, there you are in the midst of them. Somehow tonight allow the Holy Ghost to work and move in these situations that we're praying for. We give you a list of people, God, but you know every need tonight. There's nothing impossible with my God. I thank you, Lord, that you found me one day and picked me up. I wasn't too dirty, God. I wasn't too lost. You touched the blinded eyes as you ministered to those that were broken and hurting, God. Tonight, there is no disease that's incurable for you because you, oh God, are mighty and your strength is great. There's no disease tonight that you're not aware of, even though we may not even be aware of the names of those tonight that are sick. But God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you move. That's Bob Hart tonight, God, minister his body, minister, Lord, who is stomach and all the needs that he has right now, God, Sister Billy, then laugh, we pray for her in the mighty name of Jesus. We're two or three, we're just beginning to call on the name of the Lord, there's power in your name, God. I feel the power of your spirit right now as this little church began to pray, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let that sister flow tonight, God, she needs a, a minister. God in her spirit, God in this body. Cancer may have been diagnosed, but God, you're the healer. You never fail, God. I know, Lord, that you're able to do what seems impossible to me tonight. But God, I praise you right now, God, that the Holy Ghost begin to move in this house. Lord, we need the Spirit of God to, to move. God, we request that you would move in a mighty measure tonight, Lord. Just Sister Tanner and Kenny minister to her in the power of the Holy Ghost, Lord, right now. And the Spirit of God minister to her life. We pray, Lord, for Sister Jackie again, Lord, all of these needs. We pray for Taylor Wolford, God, tonight. As her little body, God, lays there in that bed. I pray, God, that somehow the divine power of the Lord will begin to touch and move. That her, Lord, make her able to swallow, allow her, God, to be touched. By the power of the Holy Ghost tonight. I, I know you never fail, God. That's why we lift our hands and magnify you. I'm coming to this house tonight to worship you, God. I think those impossibilities, God, can be moved by the power of praise. When I begin 
begin to praise you, God. I feel the divine intervention of the power of our God tonight. Hallelujah. Every need, God, that has been mentioned tonight, Sister Christie, needs a touch in her body, God. Melinda, God, you need to reach down and touch Melinda's heart, Lord. Heal her body, but touch her mind, her soul, and her spirit. Touch Bob Dunlap tonight, Lord. He needs a touch in his body. You've touched him so many times before, and tonight it's no different, God. You can do again what you've done before, and minister in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, every need tonight, Sister Lisa, touch her, Lord, I pray in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord, for what we feel in this house. I think singing to the Lord one more time. We just can continue to praise him all over this house. Why don't you just make it known unto the, to the devil that you're going to praise God tonight. You're going to give some praise in this house. Hallelujah. Against every adversary of our soul right now, God, we feel the unlimited power of God in this house. Power of our God. There's no limitations, God. When you word tonight, God, your word is powerful. Come on, church, let's just get around this place and pray for a little while. Hallelujah, Lord. We love you. We thank you, God. We know, Lord, that you're legal in the Oh, yes. Now, come on, let's pray tonight.
young people that are alcohol oriented. God, right now, break the general rate, that generational curse of alcohol right now. There's nothing too hard for you, God. You're able to do what we cannot do as men. Our God is able to do. I thank you right now and I praise you. I'm going to glorify you, God, for a little while because you are worthy of our praise, Lord. I thank you for your truth tonight. It is spread. I want to spread your truth everywhere, God. Every corner and every nation, God. I want to tell the world how much we need Jesus and how much we love him. God, by your power right now, it's not a man, but the destiny of God. Lord, we are predestinated to the Calvary's cross, Lord. Because your cross made it possible, Lord. You so love the world that you gave your only begotten Son that whosoever believeth on you should not perish, God. Touch my account these other needs right now, God. I feel, Lord, in the intercessor realm of prayer tonight that you're able to meet those needs. Hell would like for us to stop praying. Hell would like for us to just have a little short prayer when we come against every power and opposition of hell, God. We come against the, that which is against the church tonight, God. There is a name that's above every other name, and that name is more powerful and more mighty because that name is Jesus, God. We call on that everlasting name right now. Hallelujah. All power is given under that name. In the name of Jesus, we shout it on the rooftop tonight, God. We shout it in this house. We shout it out loud. The name of Jesus is able, unparalleled power, God. I thank you. I feel the Holy Ghost. Come on, y'all. Help me worship him a little while. Let's talk to our God in the midst of the trouble and the trial of the world. God, we need you tonight. Hallelujah. Walk among us. Talk to us, God. It's possible for every saint in this house to hear from you tonight, God. You just didn't come to talk to one man, God. I know, Lord, that you are able to talk to every soul that's in this house. Liberate them from the bondage of sin and all of the things that have held them back, God. Let us worship you in spirit and in truth right now. Anoint every vessel in this house to be used of you. Allow the unfolding of the Spirit, God, to bring revelation to those, God. We need your manifestation of revelation right now. It happened to a little boy in a hog pen, God. He got a revelation of who he was. Give us the revelation of who you are tonight, God. Let us know that in our Father's house uh, there's a touch of God. Let us know in this house tonight there is a God that's able to move against every sickness and disease. Come on. God is greater than cancer. Would y'all help me in the house a little while pray against cancer and bomb gun lamp. Amen to the power of the Holy Ghost tonight, Lord. Every one of us are witnesses, God, that your power is divine and you are supernatural, Lord. It's not a natural happening. It? It's a supernatural power of the Word of God. The Word of God has all power. I thank you for the Word I feel right now, God. Thank you because I know that everyone in this house is a believer. And God has really began to believe on call of your name. Something will happen. God, there's something happening right now in the atmosphere of this little church, God. Let the Holy Ghost send forth. God, you touched Grayson and Malachi. We're looking for an answer, God. We want to hear a report. Destiny, God, needs to touch in her body. Help her surrender to you, God. Let conviction visit her right now, God. Let her feel the convicting power of the Holy Ghost, Lord. Our young people all over this nation need you, Lord, as never before, God. I thank you. I want to shout a little while. Y'all okay? Come on, somebody help me in the house. Worship my God. He's worthy to be praised right now. Hallelujah, he lives. Somebody shout, Jesus lives. Jesus lives. going to sing for us tonight and testify. Amen. I feel the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody help me. Just a little while. Praise you. Thank you, Lord, so much. You know, he's been hasted in everything. 
Without him, I would be nothing. Amen. Nothing. Come on, Brother Darrell. Amen. All in my heart. Amen. So oh, every time I get up in the morning, I thank the Lord. I'm blessed. I'm so blessed to be with the Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Every day that I get up, I thank the Lord. Every day. And I have no words to express how much I love him. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, Brother Darrell. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Go ahead. That's the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. And I thank you for this little church that I'm going to. It's so pray. I praise the Lord each time I come down. I thank you, Lord, for what he's done in this little church. And he filled me with the Holy Ghost. And I talk about the book of the Lord, talking in tongues. So I can see the Lord, your Father, and your God. Hallelujah. We praise you. We need your glory for everything that you do. In Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise you. Praise you. Thank you, Lord. 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 It's a long and gravel road at my feet. They are traveling on and sometimes. Oh, the clouds are dark and low. Oh, yes, they are. Oh, but I've got, I've got to keep the faith and walk the strength.
Brother Mike said, I want you to sing that for me. So Brother Mike Allen, if you're listening, I'm going to try to sing it for you. Mm -hmm. Down on my knees when my troubles rise. Gonna talk to Jesus beyond the sky. He promised me in my peace. <coughs> Children, 
There them all up. Three of them went to the service. My baby brother, Lucky, they called him Lucky. He was in the Air Force. Everett Lawrence was in the Army. I know what it is to be in the old yonder in the yes. war. They was in the Army when the war was going on. Mm -hmm. and, and if things don't soon come to a close or, or open up or something, going to be another war. Yes. Maybe yes. throwing bombs right on us. We better have the Holy Ghost. Yes. 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 We best have the sweet Holy Ghost. Yes. Oh, I love him tonight. Yes. Love his children. I thank God. I enjoyed that, brother. There. Yes. Oh, yes. Thank yes. God. Yes. Robert. If Robert's a listen, I know he enjoyed it too. That devil jumped on him. Come over to pick up brother Jerry, and got sick and he stopped and had to go back home. Yes. Trick of the devil. Yes. Because the devil, he wants to hinder everybody from coming to church. That's his job. And he ain't greater than my God. No, and I've seen the time I was shaking so bad I saw times I've been so sick with the flu devil in my chest, coughing, headache. When I lived to Rupert and my dad and mother would be at the Quinwood preaching, having church. Honey, I'd try to get my clothes on and go all the way to Quinwood. Sick, sick, sick. I mean, my body was sick. With a little baby. Had a little baby in my arms. Lord, I got it when I got to Quinwood and they got to pray and for me. Honey, woo! Had to leave. Oh, devil, had to leave. All you got to do is put your faith in action. I believe that with all my heart. Put faith in action, Sister Elizabeth. Things has got to happen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I feel like preaching sometimes. Amen. Felt like running. Last Sunday, didn't I? The Holy Ghost got in my feet and I wanted to run. Oh, oh, I love him so much. I could never, never tell enough what yeah. he's done for me yeah. and my family. I love you tonight. Yes. God bless all of you, my prayer. Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Wonderful Jesus. So glad that God is a good God. Yes. Amen. Bless him, Lord. Talk loud, I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I told the Lord I was going to praise you.
church has got to stand fast and love the Lord with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. And I came to lift him up tonight. Somebody say, I came to lift him up. Lift him up. I know he's not come just to where we are always. Sometimes we have to get in the situation where we lift him up. Yes. And when you can lift him up to where you can see him, then you can begin to feel his touch and his power. Amen. I want to lift him up tonight. I want to lift him up. Somebody said, I want to lift him up. I want to lift him up. I want to lift him up so that he might be glorified. Tonight, just for a little while, I will not preach very long. I just want to go to the word of the Lord in the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 20. Everybody has heard this before, I'm sure, but I want to have it on my mind, and I want to just share a couple things with you. Somebody shout, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jehoshaphat stood at verse number 5, chapter number 20, book of 2 Chronicles. Give me just a moment to find it. Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven and rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thine hand is there not power and might, so there is none that is able to stand thee. Art thou not our God who did drive out the inhabitants of the land before the people Israel and gave us to the seed of Abraham thy friend forever. It's talking about they're going to form an army. Verse number 12 says, Our God will not judge them, for we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. O God, Verse number 12, chapter 20, yeah. Our God, will thou not judge them, for we have no might. Sometimes we come to a circumstance and a situation where we have no might against that great company that cometh against them. It was a great army. They were Edomites, they were Ammonites, they were those that were against them, and they were on every side of them against them. But the Lord, he said that our eyes are upon thee. I mean, he's got their eyes on the Lord tonight. Somebody say, I want my eyes on Jesus, no matter what I'm going through. Everything we're going through in this hour that we've got a lot of troubles and trials, but God's able to do all things. And then upon Jehazel, the son of Jehoriah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, and the son of Madani, that's a tough one to read. And the Levites, the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he began to testify and began to prophesy. And then he stands in verse number 17 and says these words. You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow we go out against them for the Lord will be with you. When we begin to see that the Lord has set an army against the Israelites, but God is getting ready to have a miraculous move of God because there's going to be victory against overwhelming odds. Everybody say victory against overwhelming odds. Sometimes things are against us and the Bible said they fell before the Lord and they began to speak unto God. And then we read a little farther and said, And he began to gather a people, appointed singers unto the Lord that should praise the beauty of holiness. And they went out before the army to say, Praise the Lord, his mercy endureth forever. And I say, Praise the Lord, his mercy endureth forever. And when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, he said, God set ambushments against the children of Amnon. Moab and against Mount Seir which were come against Judah and they were smitten. In this we find that the Lord was able to touch and move because praise the Lord. I want us to stand to our feet and I want us to begin to say praise you the Lord. We're going to praise the Lord this little while. Will you do that with me? 
I want you to praise him right now all over this house. Praise ye the Lord. His mercy endureth forever. Raise your voice and praise him right now because the, the trap was set, but God, you have a powerful army, God, that's coming and rising in this hour. I thank you for praise and worship of the church, God. I thank you, God, tonight that we can praise our God. In the times of impossibility, I thank you right now, Lord. Somebody shout, praise ye the Lord. His mercy endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. I, I just want to praise him for a few moments. Hallelujah. I thank you, God, that I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. Lord, I know that the reading tonight of your word began to bring ambushments against the powers of darkness that worked against the Israelites. Right now, God, we feel an appointment of the Holy Ghost and the Spirit and the power of God. Lord, begin to move in this place tonight. Allow the Holy Ghost to build up walls against those things and obstacles. There may be overwhelming odds against us, God, but you have power against all the power of the enemy, and I praise you for that. Continue to praise him just for a little while. Praise ye the Lord, his mercy endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord, his mercy endureth forever. I want to praise you, Lord. I set my face to praise you right now, Lord. I lift my voice and praise you all through this congregation as they are worshiping you, God. I pray that we can begin to feel the power of God move within this assembly, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Just clap your hands and make a joyful noise. Oh, hallelujah. Praise you, the Lord, his mercy and good forever. Praise ye the Lord, his mercy endureth forever. Raise your voice with me and shout, praise ye the Lord, his mercy endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord, his mercy endureth forever. Thank God. How many believes he cares about you? Praise the Lord, he cares because he said, casting all your care upon him because he cares for us. Every one of us tonight, I believe that he cares for us. There's none of us. That he does not care for. There's the Malachi's and the destinies and all of those tonight that seem to be in trouble. But I got a God that's able. He cares for every single one of us. Y'all mention somebody's name right now and ask God to care for them and begin to move on their lives, God, because I believe you care for every single individual or in this world and everywhere. I pray, God, as we cast our care upon you tonight, you will begin to allow the Holy Ghost to move among us. Lord, the devil's a liar, and the gates of hell cannot prevail against the blood bought church of Jesus right now. Thank you, Lord, that you love us and that you care for us. I praise you and I worship you right now. Amen. Clap your hands one more time. Something about praising God that intermingled with prayer. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. That's all right. Take your time to praise him, Lord. Hallelujah. And I just want to say a couple of things tonight that are very important. So number one is pray. You can be seated. Praise and worship. Somebody shout praise and worship. There is absolutely no offense and work against the worship and the praise and the saints of God. We may pray and not receive victory. We might have some friends over and pray and not have victory. But there is a time when you begin to praise and worship God and you connect it. There's something about praising God that makes all the atmosphere change. Everything begin to change and you begin to feel connected to the power and the presence of God. Sometimes you may not feel victory. I think God just lift your hands and begin to worship Him and say, God, I know that I may not have victory yet, but I believe victory is coming because against overwhelming odds, God is able to bring power in the midst of praise and worship. I thank God for praise and worship. I don't know about you, don't you? Thank God for the prayer and the praise of God's people that we feel all over this house tonight. I want you to know that it's impossible to praise God. Really, truly praise Him from your heart and complain at the same time. That ain't going to happen. You can't complain and praise God and worship Him at the same time. That's why I say praise is a mighty weapon against the powers of darkness because it's impossible.
impossible to praise God from your heart. And it's impossible to complain at the same time. Lord, help me not to complain. Help me to praise you. Help me to worship you. Help me, God, to glorify you in the midst of all that's going on. It's hard to glorify God and have bad feelings, Brother Ralph. Amen. You get to praising the Lord and your spirits begin to lift. And things that you felt down about begin to change. And God sets the atmosphere. Amen. Somebody shout, praise and worship will set the atmosphere. Atmosphere where we are. Amen. Oh, yeah. Clap your hands and love the Lord. This time. Yeah. The more we praise Him, somebody shout, the more we praise Him, the higher we make Him in our lives. The more we praise Him, the higher we make Him in our lives. I want to lift Him up tonight because as we praise Him, we lift him up and we praise him. And then we find out as we make the hallelujahs. Brother, Brother David, be encouraged tonight because there is a hallelujah in the house. Somebody shout, there's a hallelujah in the house. I still have my joy. Come on, somebody shout. I still have my joy. Every power of hell may work against us, but we've got a God that is able. I surrender to God. I don't surrender to the enemy. Amen. There's no way I'm going to say I won't quit. I won't give up and I won't surrender to the adversary, but I will surrender to worship and I will praise him and magnify him. Somebody asked for the oil bottle tonight. They want to spread a little oil. I want to tell you the truth tonight. There's power in the blood of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the word of God. I've got the word of God and it's powerful and it's sharper than a two-edged sword. The Bible says it's sharper than a two-edged sword. So in the times of discouragement, in the time of impossibility, when you begin to really, truly praise the Lord God from your heart, when you begin to praise Him, and all of a sudden you begin to glorify Him, and you lift Him up, and the more we praise Him, the higher He becomes in our life. I just want to worship God tonight. I felt like this message tonight could help somebody worship God, because worshiping God brings a visitation from the Spirit of God. When the church begins to worship, it begins to set the circumstance and the atmosphere for a visitation of God. God inhabits the praises of His people. He loves His people, Brother Ralph, and that's why when you begin to worship Him, sometimes you may not feel like worshiping Him, but worship Him anyhow. Hallelujah. Get a hold of Him and worship Him anyhow. When things are against you, worship Him anyhow. When the doctor says things are going bad, lift your voice and worship Him anyhow. When the doctor shakes his head and walks away, a young boy, eight years old with leukemia, the doctor walked away and shook his head. They said there was no hope. What he didn't know is the family began to worship God. And within 15 days' time, leukemia dropped away. And the power of God and the worshiping of God begins to move the habitation of God. I want him, I want him to love him and worship. I want to worship him because he is truly worthy of all praise. No matter what you're going through, troubles and trials, worshiping God brings his visitation. Worshiping God at a bedside. Worshiping God at somebody's home. Somebody that's in trouble. We got all kinds of young people that are in trouble. But God is greater than alcohol. Can you get a witness in the house? Somebody shout, God inhabits the praises of his people. Now, that means that he lives in the praises of his people. He dwells in the praises of his people. If somebody asked me where God lived, I would say he lives in the praises of his people. Can I direct you to where he is? Sometimes people ask for directions and they're looking for God. They say, well, where do you find God? The Bible says that he lives or inhabits the praises of his people. If you want to find God, find a church that's praising God. Find a church that's full of worship. Find a church that's full of praise and hallelujahs. You know, just do that right now. Praise him again and begin to let him live within your praise because you will find him in praise. That's where he lives. We set the atmosphere for visitation when we begin to praise 
God. He's able to raise the dead. He's able to do all things. He's a God that is mighty. And worshiping God. I want you to write that down somewhere. Worshiping God brings visitation from God. That's a revelation of the Spirit. You can know when you begin to worship God, there's going to be a visitation of the Holy Ghost. I think God should talk to all of us. We shouldn't have to come, we shouldn't come to church and just have one or two people, two people get touched by the power of God. I think every one of us need to hear the voice of God. Every one of us need to be encouraged. Not just pastor. I might be encouraged, but every one of you need to hear from the presence of God. Can't get a witness in the house. There's something about praising God that hell cannot stand. He begins to back up when you pray. Praise God. He begins to flee. And the weapons of his warfare will crumble underneath the praise of my God. Hallelujah. When they begin to set these ambushments, I begin to watch the praise team go out. They sit them out first. They begin to worship God. And everybody laughed when he began to prophesy. He said, we're going to go out there. We're not going to lift a weapon. We're just going to praise God. Somebody shout, we're just going to praise God. We are not helpless and we are not hopeless. We can worship God. We can lift him up. We can say, Lord, I need you in the midst of all of this. There was armies in every direction. There was the Ammonites and there was the Edomites and there were all of those that were against them. But oh, the Moabites, but God began to prophesy. Just one little guy, I won't read it tonight, but he's about four generations back that tells his daddy and his granddaddy and tells all that mama. We wouldn't even know who he was. That's the way the Holy Ghost moves. Sometimes the Holy Ghost just visits the smallest of us. And he stood up little Ralph and said, I'll tell you what, there's none of us going to fight tomorrow because the Lord is going to be on our side and he's going to fight it. Nobody knew who he was. I even had trouble reading his name a little bit. I hope he forgives me. Somebody shout hallelujah. Nobody knows your name. God knows your name. He knows all about you. He knows the will of God and the divine purpose for your name. Somebody shout hallelujah. I'm going to appoint some singers, he said. I'm going to appoint some singers. After the prophecy came, yes. the word of the Lord brings divine revelation. Yes, it does. Sometimes when you begin to worship God, as you begin to think about worshiping God, there's something beautiful about worshiping Him. Every, every adversary of your life, yes. every trouble that you have in your life, somebody shout praise begins to change the atmosphere of my life. Yes. I know that as you go through the things that you're going through, some of you, anybody going through anything tonight, just lift your hand just for a moment and say, I, I'm going through something, Pastor. I, I know drugs and alcohol and all the mess that's going on, but thank God, God is bigger. There's spiritual deliverance and spiritual visitation when you begin to worship. There was a reason why David danced unto the Lord with all of his might. There was a reason why men was moved unto emotional places because they wanted to worship God. I want to worship Him till I feel Him so deep in my spirit. I want to know He's with me. I want to know He's my God and my Savior. I want to praise Him for what He's done for me today. I'm going to help me preach a little while. I said, I want to praise Him for where He brought me from today. I was down, but He lifted me up. I cast aside my burden, but down and I felt the Holy God of Israel undergird me with power and anointing. After praise and worship comes an anointing from the presence of God, and you need to feel that. Clap your hands and shout, I want to set an atmosphere for spiritual visitation. I hear you. Let's say it again. I want to set an atmosphere for spiritual visitation. If God is going to visit the church, He's going to visit it while we are worshiping and praising His mighty name. There may be armies on every side. They have stood 
up against us. Hell stood up against you today, didn't he? Somebody shout hallelujah. Hell will rise against you daily. You just won't get ready, but I'm going to raise a hallelujah against the devil and all of his power because he is a liar. I'm going to lift up my Jesus tonight. I thank God I know his name. Thank God. Somebody shout, I know his name. He said, I'm going to appoint singers the divine will of God in our lives. It's hard sometimes to define, to really get a hold of the divine will of God as we begin to search for the will of God. But as soon as they begin to sing, whoo, oh, As soon as they began to sing, the Bible said that God set ambushments against them. And they were smitten. Everybody say they were smitten. That means they were conquered. So now you got a God that's able to conquer every enemy. And he does that. Now this wasn't the Israelites. It wasn't them that were doing the fighting. They say, Pastor, what happened? I want to tell you what happened. When God set ambushments, Brother David, he sent angels among them. Angels began to work against the Edomites and the Moabites and the Ammonites. And the Bible said that when they saw these, whatever the ambushments was, I can't explain exactly what the angels did. But all of a sudden they began to turn one against another. In the great battle of Armageddon that's getting ready to come, I feel God's going to work something just like that. He's going to confuse the enemy. Russia may come down. China may come down. There's coming an enemy against Israel. But God's going to fight for them. And God's going to lift them up. And there will be a time where God will fight for Israel. And they will stand in the midst of the slaughtered house. But know this, my God is going to make a way where there seemeth to be no way. And he's going to lift up a world that's full of confusion. They might destroy one another, but they will not destroy the purpose of Almighty God. Clap your hands, somebody in the house, and say, my purpose is God's will. Now we got to set these ambushments by angels. They just supernatural, spiritual deliverance. Sometimes we look for God to do things in the realm of physical. But he's not working that way. Brother David. He's working in the supernatural realm. He's visiting against those things that you cannot see. He's working. He, that the Bible said there that God dwelleth in a light that no man can approach. Did you ever read that? He said that God dwelleth in the light that no man can approach unto. But now, when you begin to praise Him, and you begin to worship Him, and you begin to set that atmosphere for the presence of God, you can begin to move in to that light that nobody can approach to. Because we've got to get a hold of His presence more than anything else. And when you begin to pray and ask for spiritual deliverance, somebody shout, I need a spiritual deliverance. Not just the physical realm, but a supernatural deliverance where the visitation of God literally comes upon you and you begin to feel something of the unction of the Holy Ghost. You don't even know what you're feeling. You don't even know what you're going through. Because he said, Lord, we don't know what to do. And there's too many of them for us to fight. So we're looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. I'm looking to Jesus right now. Sorry, raise your hand and shout. I'm looking unto Jesus for my answer. For he is my miracle. Lift him up. Somebody shout, lift him up. I just want to lift him up to Lift him up. Lift him up, God. I know that you dwell in a light that no one can approach unto. But when I begin to worship you, and I begin to praise you, and I begin to glorify you, somebody shout, loving Jesus. Loving Jesus. That's what you got to do. Just love Jesus. Mama's always say when you fall in love with Jesus. I, I believe that's the truth. Because when you fall in love with Jesus, 
Nothing else is the same anymore. Your life is not the same. The same. Everything begins to change. Now, we've got the Word of God. Amen. Thank God for praise and worship because it does bring the Word of God. When He began to say, by His stripes are we healed. How many believe that tonight? Amen. By His stripes are we healed. I can't approach under that Lord. I can't get there. Well, begin to praise me. Begin to worship me. Begin to lift your voice. Begin to lift your hands. I can't give you the number of times in the Word of God where He said they lifted their hands. Sometimes you just got to lift your hands and fight against the adversary that you can't even see. I mean, when you raise your hands and begin to shake them and worship God and move them around, you begin to slaughter the onslaught of hell. You begin to tear down the strongholds of the adversary. Let's try it. Stand on your feet, raise your hands, and begin to slaughter the enemy that you're fighting against right now. God, destroy drugs, destroy alcohol, destroy rebellion, destroy those things right now. Oh, God, I praise you right now, and I worship you. Got your hands all over this house. Come on, somebody shout. Sometimes it's the smallest. 
smallest of us that know how to touch God. You ought not count on your pastor to always want to, get, to touch God for you. You ought to get a hold of God for yourself. You ought to say, God, I want close enough to hear your voice. Let me hear from God Almighty. Let me be the one that's praising you in the middle of the storm. Don't just let me look around at everybody else. Sometimes everybody's look like nobody's praising God. Sometimes just a few. But don't look around to see who's praising God. Just lift your voice and lift your heart and lift your mind and begin to worship Him for the things that He has done in your life. He's moving powerfully in your, in your life. And clap your hands and shout. I want to wait on His presence. But I want to praise Him while He's coming to visit me. I know He's coming. I know He's showing up. The niece would call me and she said, Dad, I'm coming to visit you. Seven hours away. So I start going through the house, putting little things away. I want her to see a mess. Amen. I, I'm not such a good housekeeper. Just remember, when you know somebody is coming to visit you, you might want to just sort of adjust in your life. You might want to know, Jesus, if you're going to move in this situation, I want to do this for you. I'm going to change things in my life so that when the visitation of God comes, I will feel the divine power of conviction in the word of God in my heart. Somebody clap for him and shout, I'm going to praise him even if the devil isn't even like him. Even if he doesn't like him, praise him. God, I praise you. I worship you. I feel the Holy Ghost tonight in this house. Just for a few more moments, somebody say, he's greater than cancer. God is bigger than cancer. God is bigger than paralysis. God is bigger than alcohol. God is greater than drugs. Lift him up, lift him up, lift him up, lift him up, lift him up. Right now, God, praying for grace of God. I pray for grace of God. It seems like his body right now needs a touch of God. You touch him right now. Malachi, Lord, you touch Malachi. I worship you, Lord. I want, a, I want a spiritual visitation of the Almighty God. I want you to visit us, Lord. I want to straighten my life so when you get to meet God, I want to praise you in the middle of the storm. I want to worship you, God. I want to gather my thoughts and worship you, God, tonight. For mighty is our God. Wonderful is our God. Somebody shout hallelujah to the name of God. Somebody shout hallelujah to the Lord. Sometimes you just start praising for a little while. In his presence, you begin to lift him up. Lord, I'm lifting you up. I'm not going to be doom and gloom. I'm not looking downward, but I'm looking upward. I'm lifting you up. I'm lifting you up, God. I want to see you. I want you to raise my level tonight. Somebody shout, Lord, raise my level to praise and worship. Let me feel the anointing of God that dwelleth in my spirit. Prepare me for the deliverance that's coming with your visitation. Worship brings deliverance. Worship brings deliverance. Worship brings deliverance in Jesus' name. At their hands and shout, worship brings deliverance. It's a war cry against you, hell. I cry. I got a passion in praise. I, I know I preach hard. I preach. Sometimes I preach. So I just feel like God. I, I want to just be passionate about my preaching. But I want to praise you all the time. I want to praise you, God. I, I want my church to see that I'm a praiser and a worshiper. I want you to know that God is in my life every day. Not just some of the time, but all of the time. He works. And let it be an example to the pastor and to the singer and to the drum player that we worship God and we worship Him. Thank God for Mama Hart. She runs me now. She plays as God. She's a worshiper in the name of the Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. I might just worship the Lord. I don't want to be quiet. I want to praise you. I want to worship you. I want to sanctify and glorify your name in this house, Lord. Yes. Quicken me, God. Quicken me in the name of Jesus. Quicken my prayer that it might work in 
somebody's life. Quicken my prayer, God. Smite the enemy tonight. Smite the devil that has come against Malachi right now. You speak the name of Jesus. There's power. Somebody shout there's power. In the name of Jesus. Oh, thank God. I love Father's house. I love Father's house. Somebody just slip your hands and help me praise him a moment, moment and say, I love my Father's house. Oh, I love this little place. I, I love to worship God. I love to sing and praise Him. I, I want to just worship Him and praise Him. I got no place else to go tonight except to praise and worship. When I don't know what to do, I got to praise Him. When you're walking through the house, Sister Tammy, anointing things in the name of Jesus, just begin to worship Him and praise Him. Let it be known that worship builds an atmosphere of healing. Worship builds an atmosphere of getting rid of disease. I want rid of those, those, those diseases and problems in life. I want rid of my financial stress in the name of Jesus. Think I'm just raising my hands and praise. Don't have enough money to pay a power bill, but I think I'm praising anyhow. Don't have enough money to buy food. Shout. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to worship him. I'm going to magnify him. I'm going to glorify him. Because in the midst of all of those things, whew, I can see those worshipers coming down now. I love that story. I can see them coming down now. Judah, they gathered all the children, all the women, and all the men. They gathered them all around. And they began to worship God. When we begin to worship God in the house of God, something's going to happen. It, it begins to structure things to happen. The name of the Lord. I, I pray Sister Elizabeth Foot just begin to feel the touch of God as we're going to worship in just a moment. We're going to take this service out in praise and worship. Amen. That's how God wants to set the ambushes tonight. He wants to appoint worshipers and praisers that the divine will of God may open up in his in this place tonight. Pray for Sherry and Rob and those that are sick tonight. Pray for Christy. God might touch her right now while we're worshiping and praising God. Lift your hands and begin to thank you for touching Sister Christy's life. Thank you, Lord, for healing her body. Tomorrow, the tests are going to be good. Oh, you can come on, help me just a minute. Hallelujah. Tomorrow, the test will be better. Tomorrow, the test will be good. Tomorrow, there'll be a good report because we have praised you and worshipped you. Somebody just praise him right now. Lord, I thank you. Praise you, Lord, for your touch right now. I want you to know, Lord, I'm hungry for you. I'm hungry for your presence. I'm hungry for the move of God to move in this hour. I want to see divine intervention. I want healings to take place. I get text after text after text. We pray and we seek God. And I'm saying, Lord, will you work? Will you work? Will you do your work, oh God? I'm going to praise you. Because sometimes prayer is not enough. You got to add some pra praise and some worship. Got to get your hands lifted up. Got to get your voice working. Amen. I've seen men pray for hours and hours, but sometimes you got to add something to your prayer. You got to start praising him for what he's doing in the atmosphere. And you got to thank him for what is working out to your benefit. Because he laid, he daily loadeth us with benefits and gives us the favor of God. That little prayer that was prayed, Sister Elizabeth, only had 224 words. Think about it. In, the, in this scripture that I just read to you, it was only 224 words. But God delivered them from enemy after enemy and power after power. Sometimes it's not all the words that's important. It's the faith that we put behind the words. Sometimes. It's faith. Somebody shout faith. 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 Sometimes it's faith behind the words. 
I fight as the Spirit of God brought deliverance to the Israelites. Unseen angels working, moving. I feel like tonight we can send forth some angels to work on destiny. God, she needs to surrender to your will right now. Oh God, in the name of the Lord. I pray, God, that you would work on Hannah and Holly. They need you, Lord, right now. So many needs tonight. The Lord began to set ambushments against them. And you know, after they were smitten, they didn't see the angels and they didn't really know what had happened. The Bible said they gathered spoils for three days. Can you imagine that? Three days they gathered spoils. Just out there, mom, getting big blue jewels, getting gold and silver. Three days, the Lord done the work and they didn't even find it. All they had to do was gather the spoils. Say, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. They just run around for three days saying, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He's so good to me. Look what the Lord has done. They gathered spoils for three days. And the Bible said they could not carry all of it. Man, I can't wait to get so many blessings from God. I can't even carry them all. I can't even tell you how good he's been to me. Watch him as he saves the family. Watch him as he heals the sick, brother. I want you to take home a testimony tonight that God is going to let you gather spoils from your worship tonight and your praise in this house. Sometimes you just got to say, Lord, I need, and, and that didn't know how it ended. Sister Elizabeth, I want you to know how it ended. It said they gathered spoils for three days, could not carry it all, and they returned home with great joy. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, I got great joy. Somebody shout, I got great joy. Did you want to go home with great joy? Hallelujah. Just out here praying to God, three days, didn't fight, didn't live no battle.
224 words. But all of a sudden, 224 words, Brother Darrell, brought angels from heaven. And the work of God began to be planted among the enemy. Hey, you Moabite. Hey, you Ammonite. Hey, you, you Edomite. I, I don't even know who they are. I just know they're full of lights. Amen. So I shout hallelujah. That might be the devilite. Hallelujah. You devilite, I come against you in the name of the Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah.